Um, there's a really great tool for this called the Mesh Checker. And so uh, if I come over here and I have my half chair selected, and I come over here to Mode in the Attributes window, there's one for modeling right here. Right by default, it's in the object mode. Um, and if I come over here to modeling, there's something really nice here called mesh checker. Um, and this is a really cool tool and it highlights uh, things that will be a problem uh, in your mesh for a variety of reasons, right? And so based on our other work, um, a lot of this should make sense. We have isolated points, um, complex poles, right? A poles where we're going to get more than four edges meeting at a point. Um, boundary edges, non-manifold, um, non-planar polygons, right? You guys, these make sense based on the previous vocabulary work we've done, um, right? Like a non-planar polygon is gonna, not going to have all four points on the same uh, plane, right? Which isn't always terrible, right? You see that that's uh, pink. And so uh, all these things, it calls all these out and you can go ahead and select the things. It also gives you a count of like how many of the bad things there are in your um, model right now so that you can select them. It's not as easy for all of these as just saying select and delete. For some of them it is. And so for edge points, right? Uh, turns out when I was modeling something happened and now I've got two extra points here but you see how they're not connected to anything, right? They're just sort of a point. They're not, it's not connected to anything else and there's no edge loop. And so these points are not, I, I don't want these here, right? They're totally unnecessary and they're gonna do nothing but cause problems, right? In fact, they make this, which looks like a quad, actually an end gone, right? Because this edge gets divided into two. Does that make sense? Right, so to fix, let's just do this one at a time. These are called the edge points. Let's uh, fix and delete those. And so I can just select those two and hit delete. And now I have zero um, edge points. Make sense? Um, the one above that is isolated points. Right now I don't have any isolated points, but let me create a few to show you what would be the problem. And so if I come in here and select maybe these, polygons and delete them. Um, now, if I come back to this, let's come back to that modeling mode. And an isolated point is going to be a point that's not connected to a polygon. Let's see. Before, when you would delete polygons in Cinema 4D, um, it would leave the points, but I believe that's different now. Let's see if I delete all these guys right here. I'll leave this one out. And now I go to points. Let's see. There we go. And so now uh, I control drug this one, so I had an extra one here. Um, I go to isolated points and say select. And so this is a point that's hanging out here that's not connected to any geometry. This is always bad. You don't want this. Um, and so again, this one's easy to fix. You can just tell it to select them and delete those. And that gets rid of those isolated points. All right, so isolated points just really hanging out in space. Edge points, the ones that are unnecessary, dividing an edge and not forming any other polygons. Sound good? Okay, Com complex points are gonna have a bunch of edges meeting at them, or complex poles, rather. And so complex poles, uh, you can choose how many edges are meeting. We don't have any happening generally in like more square cubic kind of things. You're not gonna have as many of these, and it's not um, as big a deal. And so that's, that's fine for right now. You see I have zero, and it's okay. And uh, let's go to non manifold. Let me see if I come back here. Let's come out here and select the whole thing. 
All right, and so I got to come back here and go to modeling, um, and I keep doing this. Let's fix this so I don't have to keep doing it. Uh, it would be great to have that open as a separate window, and so let's do that. We're going to come up here to window, and we are going to make a new window with new, there we go, new palette. There, no, not new palette. We want a new window. New. There we go. New group window. So it gives me this empty window right there. I accidentally drug it down. Let's undock that back. There we go. And uh, move this. There we go. And so let's grab this. It's a little tricky to grab when it's just the one thing. There we go. That gives us a little more space. Uh, you move them around by grabbing the dots there. And I can move this over this way. There we go. And let's go ahead and make this. And let's say new attributes manager and drag that over here. And uh, I got this, you know, set it to modeling and set mesh checker. And now I don't want this to go away. I want this locked here. And so now I can do this by locking this view. And so if I go to right here, that'll stay put while this attributes window changes based on you know what I have selected, like normal. But this one will stay there so that I can get that information. Make sense? Cool. All right, so now let's come back here. Okay, let's fix a few things. Let's go to non-manifold, right? And so these non-manifold polygons, uh, I've got one here, right? It highlights them in red. Let's get rid of these other ones. Um, and you see how this, there's a polygon inside the chair here? You guys see that? That, right? That essentially, um, when you think of manifold and non-manifold, um, the best way th this word is used to describe when it's sort of the outside of your object is an unbroken continuous shell. Okay, that m would mean it's manifold. And so if things are inside the shell, that's usually not good. Okay, um, like as if you're you were able to. Uh, th this is a big deal when you actually are three D printing. You need your three D model to be manifold. You know, so it's completely sealed up. And if you filled it up with water, the water wouldn't leak out, right? So there's no hole in it. Does that make sense? Right. And so this is violating that. And so I'm going to get rid of that one right here. There we go. And that gets rid of that. And then in here, we've got some other problems. Let's go ahead and turn this back on. Let's get rid of these too. So we got uh, some poly. We need to have this open, like we talked about before. I'm gonna delete here. Grab the right polygons. Okay, that's open. There's two here. I need to get rid of this one and that one. There we go. That's looking good. Uh, this is highlighted in green because it's a a boundary edge, but that's gonna be okay because we're, we're gonna. Uh, get rid of that with the symmetry, right? Um, if we were modeling both sides of the chair simultaneously, then we wouldn't want to have that green edge. But in our case, it's it's all right. Making sense so far, right? So I don't have anything inside. And it's going to perfectly fill up with water when it gets reflected. Um, and then we've got non-planar polygons. That one's a little bit out of whack. But the when these are very slight like this, Right? A lot of times you get the non-planar ones, especially when you use the bridge, right? Um, and so if we look here, no, nope, that's okay. Um, these will be fine. I don't think they're gonna throw off the bevel very much. And I think we're pretty good. And so now we've got this locked here, and this really allows us to clean up 
the existing geometry. Making sense? See how this is a cool tool? So now, um, let's do the same thing I was doing with Charlie's and get this one totally fixed in the center. And so I want to grab all the points right here, right? And so I'm going to go use that UL, but watch what happens. UL, and it only finds the loop right there. It doesn't go the whole way around. I'm going to turn this off for a second. It doesn't go, like it finds this loop, it finds this loop, it finds this loop, but it won't connect them. And so the other main fixing tool that's big is optimize, right? And so uh, often I'm going to go ahead and grab all of the points and right click and say optimize. What does optimize do? It fuses together some, po some tiny points that may be really close to each other, right? And so here, if we look at this, this is actually a little bit off. And so I'm going to UL select this and move it. And I want to move it so that this locks on to those points. So I'm going to turn on snapping and then hit E and move these so they snap onto those points. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's say UL right there, E and bring this over. Have it snap on. Let's make sure vertex snapping is on. Yeah, vertex snap good. Now, um, again, let's grab all the points, right click, optimize, and let's see if we fixed our loop. UL on edge mode. Not yet. Let's zoom in and see what's going on. These are not together. Let's do this one more time. Let's grab here and uh, E There we go. All right, so with 3D snap, it found that better. E. Let's grab one at a time. We'll get this point right here. And I'll move this that way. I'll grab this point right here. And move this this way. See how they're not quite together. There we go, they're snapped together. Let's see if I can get close enough to actually see the optimize happen. Right here. All right, so I'll move this one a little bit closer. All right, it's, uh, there we go. And so if I grab all the points and I right click optimize, I can also pull up this window and this tells me how close the points need to be to get smushed together. And let's make it a little bit closer, let's say 0 0.001. And now these I think are within that threshold if I run this. Nope, a little bit further apart. Let's run it one more time. Optimize. Control A. Optimize. There we go. And everything hopefully is fused together now. Let's go back to edge mode and try. UL. There we go. See how it finds the continuous edge now? The whole way across there, right? Um, because when we control drug over, we got extra points. And so that optimized tool, I can't stress that enough. That's super um, useful to clean up stray points that happen uh, often. Right, so that in addition to the mesh checking, is you know super super useful. Uh, let's check my uh, edge here. And so if I grab this, and I uh, the X size, I'm in world mode. Let's hit E. Let's go to point. UL. 
there we go. Uh, size is zero and zero. There we go, that's all lined up. And same thing up here. Let's see if this is working. UL, select that. And zero, zero, that one's all good. And so now if I put it back in the symmetry, super clean. Make sense? Any questions about using that stuff? You see how that's a big help for you know, visualizing the problems and then fixing those problems? And let's turn the bevel back on. And so the bevel on the chair here, for instance, um, Charlie, yours was inverted, right? And so we want the bevel to round. And so I, I'm usually not changing the bevel mode, right? We want it to be you know, like a smooth rounding. And so I, in my case, I have 0 0.01 uh, centimeters as the offset in three subdivisions. You know, maybe I could probably even get away with two here and that would be fine, right? And if everything is fine with the mesh, the bevel will work really cleanly. Uh, the bevel is also a good one for letting you know that something is wrong with your mesh if it's not working cleanly, right? 